what's up YouTube? It's been a while, but I'm back. And what I've been doing the past like week or so is I've been playing a lot of New World. And I've also been moving, as you can see in the background, I'm in a new place. And it's a lot easier to make videos and do other stuff, but I was unable to have any internet access for uploading videos for like a week or two. And it's actually kind of sad. The first day I come back and I'm actually ready, I streamed a little bit is the day to actually destroy the ore stacker. I know a lot of people saw the balance manifesto or whatever they try to push out and where they explain their reasoning. And that balance manifesto is actually really surprising because it actually killed ore stackers and aura minion builds. And I don't think that I was expecting them to be able to kill the ore stackers so thoroughly. And this is actually just such a bad change because it accomplishes nothing in what they set out set out to do. So what they set out to do, GGG said, was they wanted to leave aura stackers intact, but nerf aura bots in party play. What happens is they actually ruin aura stackers. They actually ruin aura minion builds, and aura bots are still insanely strong in party play for trivializing all the content. And I don't really know. I never really expected them to be able to nerf aura bots enough to make it so that they can't trivialize the content. But nerfing aura stackers to this degree at aura minion builds is just kind of uh, bad because they actually accomplished the exact opposite of what they set out to do. And I'm going to go over quickly. I wrote down everything in my notepad and I figured out everything about whether aura stacker is playable and what actually really changes with aura stackers and I'm going to give some brief predictions about what I think the best build in 3.16 will be according to all of these changes so far. So this graph is, I've been showing on my screen, right? So this graph here pretty much paints the story. So the purple line is 3.15 and then you have this axis here which is your percent reserved of your mana. So this slider here changes the percent reserve so this is a for 50 percent aura and the green line is 3.16 and what happens so here is how much reduced reservation you have so currently if you have 100 percent reduced reservation your auras will cost zero percent but now you can see here with 100 percent reduced reservation in 3.16 and this is taking into account that it's now reservation efficiency or whatever it's called so it's doubled already so having 100 percent equivalent reservation in 3.16 will make the aura cost 17 percent mana a 50 percent aura that is so if you look at it this way this is called an infinite nerf so before it costs zero percent mana and now a 50 percent aura will cost 17 percent mana once you reach 100 percent and now why is this important? Because Helm Enchance allows us to get 100% reservation. So usually we have around 65% in 65% re reservation reduction or reduced re reservation. So now with the Helm Enchant or a notable on a jewel like Sublime Form, we go from 65 to 35. Or a Helm Enchant, we can probably get to like 95. So then our aura pretty much costs absolutely nothing. So now this might not seem like a big deal, but you add this up like 10% here, 15% there, and it adds up. And we're just unable to run the amount of auras that we need. And that's not even the huge issue. So right away you see that there's this huge reservation issue that makes the helmet chant and notables on medium clusters completely useless. But now we run into an even bigger issue, which is that there's no more medium clusters on the auras. Medium clusters are actually just gone. In fact, they just decided to remove the auras and move it over to, what's it called? They moved it over to small clusters. And that is so bad because what do you have with small clusters? With small clusters, you can only have one notable, right? So this is just a huge nerf. So now I'm going to go over some quick number crunches of why this build is not going to work. At least as we think it used to work. So you have three fifty percent auras on Prism Guardian. Now this is pretty normal. So I'm pretty much writing down all of the necessary auras one needs to play in aura stacker. You have zealotry, haste, hatred, you have wrath, grace, and these are fifty percent auras. And then thirty-five percent auras, you have discipline, purity of fire, purity of lightning, purity of ice, 
and 25% auras, you have two heralds you need. And then flat auras, you have vitality, clarity, precision. And then the rest, you surely aren't going to be able to run any aspects whatsoever. So you can forget about that. So right here, let's go. Let's just start with this. So you have 350% auras. Of course, you're going to put these on Prism Guardian. And now Prism Guardian with 350%, you'll just reserve around 80 to 90% of life. So one of the big nerfs to auras in general is the fact that reservation efficiency is now mana efficiency. So it has become, let's see. So now there's two different types of reservation efficiency. There's life reservation efficiency, generic reservation efficiency, and then the main thing, which is mana reservation efficiency. So most of the nodes on the tree, on the passive tree, are all now mana reservation efficiency, meaning that it will not give you any reservation efficiency for your life. Luckily, Prism Guardian, it says here, now has 30% increased reservation efficiency. So what this means is that Prism Guardian, instead of, like, so before, you have 65%, right? So I'm pretty much saying before every single character on a baseline had around 65% reservation reduction so 25 percent. you can see here before characters would have like a 50 percent aura would cost around five percent mana but now with prism guardian you would have no reservation because you're pretty much you have no life reservation so now your auras cost around 30 percent or so so it's pretty bad so you can pretty much only run three 50 percent auras on your Prism Guardian, so you don't even need to worry about using Arrogance anymore. So now your life is pretty much done for. So you got 350% auras out of it. It's not too bad. Now your 50% auras will cost 21% versus 17%. So you look at this, 65%, right? So before it used to be around 21%. So now it's 21%. Before it used to be around 17%. So these are pretty rough estimates, but it just gives you a pretty good look about the whole problem we're facing. And immediately, it doesn't seem too bad. 21 versus 17%. But you can see here, this stuff adds up 4%. We run, what, like 15 ores. If every single thing costs like 4% extra, that's already an insane amount of difference that we can never make up. So already alone, we run these two 50% auras on our mana pool, and it's at 42% of our mana is gone. And our life is already gone. And that doesn't even bring up the 35% ores. Now, these ores are pretty much all mandatory. You have Discipline, Purity of Fire, Purity of Lightning, Purity of Ice. So these are four 35% auras. And you can see the 35% aura. So you can readjust this here to be 35, 65% reservation. It's like 12 before, and then now it's 15. So what this means is that you lose another 12% reservation. So this is already at 60%. So right here, this is game over. 42 plus 60 is 102%. You can't do anything. You're, it's over. You can't run any more auras. You can't run any more heralds. You can't run any of your flat auras. It's just impossible to make this work. Now you might think, oh, I'm just going to use a helm enchant. Well, the problem is the helm enchant doesn't really do that much. The helm enchant will give you like 20% more reservation efficiency. But what this means is it goes from 65 to 20 to 85, and it's only a 3% difference. Before, it could potentially reduce this almost to 0% or 5%. And that's just how big of a nerf this overall is. So it goes from 15. So this is what, 15? That's 65. To 85, it goes to 12. Or let's just say it's 12. I guess this is like probably not a great example. I think this is actually 57% or so. So you can see even with the helm enchant factored in, it doesn't really matter that much even if you got 35 percent notable on some of them like say you and you can't even get the ore reservation notables because they're not on the small cluster anymore because you're going to get one notable so you can see here the mana situation will just never never work and now let's get into the next problem that we just dealt with the reservation issue in order to reserve the ores we need now it's about the aura effectiveness so you can see here, aura effectiveness is completely screwed. And that's just to be brutally honest. And let's just go over why it's completely screwed. So number one is that 
The ore cluster jewel can now be found on small cluster jewels rather than medium cluster jewels. This is just horrible. It means we can only have one notable. And guess what we're going to spend that one notable on? It's not going to be first among. It's not going to be replenishing presence. We're going to spend it on this new cluster jewel notable that has been added that grants 10% increased effect of ores on you. So now we replace first among and replenishing presence with this 10% one. So theoretically, you can get to nearly 300% by getting like eight of these small clusters. And then you get a glorious vanity with like 40 to 50%. And then you're 130, you're at 230%. And then you get some other ore effectiveness on the tree. And yeah, you get pretty close to getting to around 300%. It's definitely doable to get to 300%. However, when you get to 300% aura effectiveness, you lose out on a lot. So I just wrote down some of the stuff we lose out. We lose out on no more replenishing presence or first among equals. What this means is that we no longer have access to regen. We no longer have access to duration. This means that we have a shorter duration on smite, we have a shorter duration on ball haste, and we have no regen for RF. And our defenses is just overall worse because we don't have that much regen anymore. And that's just a horrible. And then we also lose eight jewel sockets. All of these small cluster jewels could be jewel sockets, right? Every single one of these jewels could be like double multi percent ES or something like that. So this is just an awful, awful nerf. And not to mention, we also lose 16 plus passive points on small cluster jewels. Now you'd think we could gain eight medium clusters, but... In order to gain the A medium clusters, we would have to lose a bunch of points and we probably will have to sacrifice the medium clusters to just put in the small clusters into the medium cluster slot. So you can see overall, or effectiveness is also solvable, but the amount that you lose is absolutely crazy. And be unable to use these jewel sockets to get these jewels that have multi means that we will never be able to switch out of Malagaros. Malagaros will be mandatory and this is an absolutely horrible horrible thing for the ceiling of the build because we can never get above 300 percent crit without having jewel sockets and having to use all small clusters we will never ever touch 300 percent multi and that's just a sad fact of what has happened to this build so you can see there are ways to work around it and i have presented ways to work around it right you don't need to run Grace. You can drop Grace. You can drop Purity of Fire. And yeah, your build's still going to be functionable. It's going to be playable. You can use Malagaros. You can use all small clusters. You can use like some medium clusters for damage. It could be pretty good. It could be even able to do all content in the game. And there is a way to kind of fix it by using March of the Legion. March of the Legion, you would gain back what 350% auras so you could get malevolence back you can also get some more so you could probably could wrath and grace on it with malevolence and maybe you could put like increased duration or something i don't really know i don't know if increased duration even works but then and then you could probably finally fit in all of your heralds and then other stuff that you wanted to do with march of the legion so it's definitely doable with march of the legion but without first among equals, I mean, you would have malevolence, so this line is actually wrong. So without first among equals, the duration is going to be pretty bad. Without points on a tree to put in the duration, it's going to be really bad. And it would be awful quality of life. But that is the solution if you wanted to play Aura Stacker. And it will still be doable if you want to use March of the Legion, you want to use Malagaros. And it will be definitely playable, but is it going to be worth your time? It's not going to be the best build anymore. It's really hard for me to say it, but at this point in time, ore stackers in this current state of these nerfs will not be the best build in the game if you invest the infinite currency into it. It just will not be. There's nothing you can do to fix this. This is a logarithmic function. So even if you got 300% reduced reservation, you will never ever make your ores free. It's an infinite nerf to us, and that's why... I think ore stackers as a super end game chase build and aspirational build is dead. But it will still be playable if there's a diehard fan who wants to play it. I might even try it out at some time, but 
it's just kind of sad. And now I want to talk about Ourobots since people always talk about Ourobots and they want to know how are Ourobots actually affected. So the sensible nerf, of course, for Ourobots is to nerf generosity and the nerf scaling. And then you can put generosity still affects minions and it'll be perfectly fine. You can not make the medium and go to medium cluster go to a small cluster and you can still get two notables and all will be perfectly kind of fine. It would be a lot better. Not perfectly fine, but it would be definitely manageable. But in true GGG fashion, I don't know if they are clueless about what they're doing or they just like screwing over builds or they just like having it this huge dynamic shift. They decided to nerf three things. They decided to nerf the ore reservations and they also decided to nerf the ore effectiveness. And with all those things to combine together, it just becomes a complete disaster, right? And there's just no other way of putting it. But Ourobots, on the other hand, are not really that nerfed in terms of how much effectiveness they provide to your party member. Now, Ourobots are definitely going to be nowhere near as powerful as before. Instead of giving you like 10x damage, they might give like 4x or 5x. But giving 4 to 5x damage is still going to trivialize everything in the game. It's still going to make group play completely overpowered and make the end game not challenging it at all for them. Now, the reason why this happens is because unlike an aura stacker, aura boss does not need to run every single one of these auras in order to be viable, right? They can not run Herald of Ice, Herald of Thunder. They don't even need to run Zealotry if their carry is not a uh, spell damage carry. They can miss out on one of these auras and be perfectly fine. An aura stacker cannot miss out on any of these auras because everything synergizes together for survivability and damage, and that's the reason why Ourobots got away with almost like not a huge nerf. Like in the end, this whole balancing thing to nerf Ourobots without touching ore stackers is a complete lie. Ourobots are going to be as strong as ever and it's still going to trivialize everything. And that's pretty much what I think about Ourobots. That doesn't even mention the fact that you can just run two Ourobots and cover almost all of the auras and it's still going to be really really strong it's definitely going to be super good and i don't really know what to say i feel like ggg does not know what they're doing when they're nerfing certain things either because they don't know enough about the build or they just don't care and they just want to do a complete shift and get rid of an archetype altogether now a lot of times people complain about build diversity and build diversity gets killed because of this because instead of having more choices they force us into certain build archetypes like SST Gladiator or now it seems like they're pushing like some ES block archetype. We never know, but that's pretty much what they want the game to be. They want it to be like a MOBA where there's like leagues with different skills and different archetypes that are the meta. And it's not really a bad thing, but it just kind of feels bad when they say they're going to do one thing and then something else completely different happens. Overall, not really too like sad about this, but it does kind of suck that this build kind of got trashed. But I do think there's better things out there. There's definitely better builds out there than aura stackers. And I do think the best builds in game will be in stacker of ES buffs. Having 20% extra ES is insane. And it will be probably the best aspirational build to go for, I think. His damage is insane, his clear speed is not bad, and it's actually just a really fun build overall. Everyone loves playing a Wander. And Accuracy Stagger Juggernaut is another contender, I think, especially with the armor changes. If you could somehow find a way to make the Accuracy Stagger a little tankier, I think Accuracy Stagger is probably going to be the build I'm playing. Because I do think that that build, it has more damage than the Aura Stagger. It's pretty fun to play. It has 30 attacks per second. And it's definitely a build that has not been perfected yet. And I do think... In the end, I'm still going to be playing some sort of stacker. It might not be an aura stacker. It might not be a strength stacker. But it will be some sort of stacker. Because stacking defenses with offense will still be the best... Uh, what's it called? The best build in the game. Now, hardcore, I think some ES block, maybe ED Contagion might make a resurgence, especially with the dot multi changes being more widely available. But TLDR of this whole balance manifesto for the past three days is it kills war stackers and mini builds, but does not change party play meta, trivializing everything. 
or bots are not going to go away they'll still be as strong as ever and so don't get too salty where you still see people using or bots to trivialize the game and i'll try to come up with some new builds but right now it's looking like in stacker or accuracy stacker but 